Good driving, kids, is all about is all about good habits. And so he would say, you know, even if there's nobody behind you, still hit the turn signal because it's all about forming those good habits. And I think even in video games, it's uh, important to just develop those good habits. Yeah, I gotta say, I don't feel great about killing that guy. I know it's just a video game, but but at the same time, I also feel great about it. And that's the thing that concerns me the most. I feel sick to my stomach, but I, I kind of enjoyed it. So the drama surrounding Sweet Baby Inc. and what some people are calling Gamergate 2.0 has continued to escalate. The update I have for you guys is that now conservative commentator Matt Walsh from The Daily Wire has decided to weigh in on things, but... Here's the thing. Instead of finding common cause with gamers as like allies against the woke menace, for some reason, it seems like his team is is intent on just antagonizing the entire industry, just everybody in the gaming sphere. So if you're not familiar with Matt Walsh, he's probably one of the bigger hosts in the conservative media sphere. He has his own podcast, The Matt Walsh Show, and he's also very well known for a documentary he did, What is a Woman?, that was kind of skewering and parodying the fact that the left has become so out of touch with reality that there are some progressives who actually cannot define a woman anymore lest they offend trans people. And I want to be upfront here. I like a lot of Matt Walsh's stuff. I 100% still consider myself overall a fan of his show. And I think he does a lot of good work. However, I think if you've been following Matt for a while, you will also know that the man hates video games. And I would even go so far as to say more broadly, nerd culture. He is one of those old school conservatives who I think when he looks at video games and, you know, things like superheroes, he thinks, oh, that's for kids that's childish, which obviously I disagree with him on, but you know what? Just because someone says something I don't agree with, it doesn't mean I'm gonna write them off or their show entirely. You see, recently on his show, he decided to do a segment on wokeness in the gaming industry, including talking about what's going on with Sweet Baby Inc. right now, which is not a bad thing. I wanna, I wanna preface all of this by saying it's a good thing that more and more people are talking about this issue. However, the way in which he went about things, I think a lot of people right now are saying perhaps what wasn't the best. Again, I will repeat, I like his show overall. And if you are interested in conservative politics, I actually, I recommend you do go follow Matt. He says a lot of really smart things. This I have some issues with though. So here's a statistic that at least if you were born at any point prior to the 1990s might be hard to believe. By revenue, the gaming industry is bigger than both the movie industry and the music industry combined. And for the past several years, it hasn't been especially close. The difference is consistently more than $100 billion per year. So video games are a massive market, one that's mostly targeted at young people, of course. But this so I just want to stop Matt there. Uh, throughout this entire segment, and when you listen to Matt's overall commentary on video games, you'll notice that he comes from the perspective of like video games are for children, which even by the stat that he just gave, is clearly not the case. Yes, there are video games that exist for children and children do play video games, but overall video games are just a general medium. Most of the most profitable video games are made specifically for adults and kids shouldn't even be playing them if you look at the ratings. Just wanted to put that out there because even that idea like, oh, video games are for children, I feel like that's a very old school and I'm sorry, but frankly, out of touch approach to the topic. And we have more to talk about, trust me, but first I wanna tell you guys about a really cool new Blaze Original that you can stream right now on blazeoriginals.com. So you guys maybe know by now, Blaze Originals are mini documentaries where the Blaze sends us, the hosts, on the ground to cover issues that the mainstream media isn't talking about. Well, the third episode is now out and it features Jason Buttrell. It's called Texas versus the Feds, how the elites use the border crisis against us. You guys may be wondering, whatever happened to that Texas border standoff well, Jason Buttrell and the Blaze Originals team, they hit the road with the Take Our Border Back convoy to the front line. They went to uncover what was really happening during Governor Greg Abbott's fight against federal agents. Our team has revealed the story the mainstream media doesn't want you guys to know about. If you want to check out this explosive new piece, head on over to therealbordercrisis.com and use code BORDER to get $30 off your Blaze TV subscription and to see a lot of other great content, including our previous Blaze Originals, one of which I even hosted myself, 
going to Maui to figure out what exactly is happening in the aftermath of the Lahaina fires. This is great on the ground investigative journalism you're not going to see anywhere else. Despite those numbers, for the most part, the games industry has avoided mainstream scrutiny. As a lot of people have pointed out, Gamergate, which happened 10 years ago at this point, that was such a huge movement in the gaming industry, one of the biggest industries on the planet that actually did get mainstream news coverage. I mean, just a quick Google search shows that the Washington Post has articles about Gamergate. So does The Guardian. So does Fox. There's an entire, albeit very biased, article about Gamergate in the Encyclopedia Britannica. And now I can still be glad that he is trying to cover this issue while simultaneously saying, hey, perhaps if you're going to talk about it on your show, maybe do a little bit more background research into it. You'll see far more discussion about, say, Sydney Sweeney or Taylor Swift than you'll ever see about prominent video game voice actors and directors who pretty much no one knows anything about. These no-name studios are behind the single most coordinated effort to indoctrinate millions of children through entertainment that's ever occurred in this country. Okay, so once again, here we have Matt framing this as just being about children. Uh, that's not the case. And while I will say that a lot of the general public are not familiar with some of these smaller game studios, I mean, obviously, most people have heard of Activision. Most people have heard of Ubisoft. Maybe Matt specifically hasn't, but again, that doesn't mean that the attention isn't there. All of this, again, is just coming off as someone who doesn't understand the topic that they are trying to cover. This effort is maybe more powerful than the teachers' unions, if only because... These propagandists mostly work in secret. Even if you homeschool your children, they're not immune to it. You might have heard of something about, uh, you might have heard something about one of the companies behind this indoctrination effort called Sweet Baby Inc. or SBI. So next in the segment, and the segment is about 20 minutes long. If you haven't seen it yet, uh, Matt Walsh goes into a lot of the best examples recently happening of wokeness, specifically in video game. He talks about the whole Sweet Baby Inc. saga, and there is good information he provides in this segment. I'm not saying it's all bad. However, toward the end of the segment, unfortunately, Matt once again kind of highlights how uh, he's not someone well-versed in this issue. So what this means is that the video game industry, without a lot of fanfare, has transformed into a tool of both propaganda and surveillance. Um, as other people have mentioned, there's been quite a lot of fanfare actually following this entire development. And some people might say, well, there's not been fanfare like in conservative media or mainstream media. And like, yeah, that would be fair to say. But the people who are covering this issue, they've gotten millions and millions of views. Uh, they have more subscribers and followers probably than the mainstream media has, period. So once more, it's just kind of inaccurate to say, oh, no one's been talking about this. This hasn't received fanfare. It actually has. It's an effective way to indoctrinate children precisely because it hasn't received much attention and also because children spend, many of them, hundreds of hours a year, and that might be an undercount, a severe undercount, uh, 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 with this kind of content. So it should get, it our, get a lot of our attention. And now finally, that attention is here. And it's yet another reason to keep these games as far away from your children as possible. And if you do that, games journalists literally the lowest form of journalists on the planet. I mean, that's true. That is true. Will accuse you of harassment. And that's exactly how you'll know that you're doing the right thing. All right. So he basically ends the segment saying, no one has talked about this or not a lot of people have talked about this. It hasn't been highlighted until now. And it's also a great example of why you should keep these games away from your children. So just to be all on the same page, Matt ends this segment with saying, keep games away from your children period. Let's not play games. That's the answer. I think it's a good thing that more people are talking about wokeness in entertainment, including the video game industry. But if Matt's message here is this is why we shouldn't play games, then I don't know if we can really say that's a net positive. A lot of people, they care about wokeness in the video games industry because they like video games. They want to see them return to their former glory and, you know, have studios just focus on things like character and story and just gameplay. But if the activism we're now seeing from conservative media is let's just destroy the industry entirely, it's like, well, I, I would venture us to say that's actually counterproductive to what gamers are fighting for. But when Matt started really getting backlash, at least on social media, is when Jeremy from Geeks and Gamers, D-Day Cobra, he decided to highlight that last part of the segment where Matt's saying, like, this hasn't received attention until now, with the caption, Matt Walsh is the first person to highlight wokeness in the video game industry, according to Matt Walsh. Now, obviously, that's some hyperbole. Uh, he's exaggerating for kind of comedic effect. I think leaning into the whole, remember when Jennifer Lawrence uh, claimed to be the first woman 
<laughs> you know, taking credit for that. Uh, yeah, we're kind of like, he's memeing on him a little bit. But yeah, a lot of people, uh, once this clip started going viral, it's got 1.5 million views, did start clowning on Matt for this take. I even weighed in, be nice to Matt. That's the inventor of video games you're talking about. George Alexopoulos, truly is the king of gamers. Where would we be without him? And you also have that Star Wars girl saying, does he think it's demonic too? Now, for people who are not familiar with Matt Walsh lore, the reason why him more so than other people with this take might be getting backlash from gamers is that he has openly come out against things like anime, saying, yes, it's demonic, I think was his his exact phrasing. He since said, oh, I was just kind of kidding and exaggerating. I think it's safe to say at the very least does not like anime, though. And regarding video games specifically, yes, Matt Walsh has historically been pretty anti-gamer. Some of his posts I want to highlight here just so people understand the history between Matt Walsh and gamers include him saying things like, my point on video games, when a man's identity and friendships are primarily based on an affinity for a toy Way, it has become unhealthy. That's all. Look, some men have identity and friendships around things like sports, around things like chess. I don't understand why old school conservatives like Matt Walsh feel like video games specifically are like beneath it all. What's wrong with having friends that you bond with or that you met through video games? He also said, I don't think it's a problem necessarily if grown men play video games. It's a problem when they find identity and community in the toys. Now, community through video games, through a hobby, through an interest is a problem. Why? Matt Walsh historically has been one of the most vocal people trying to uh, link violence to video games. That's still going on. On 8chan, they literally talk about mass shootings like it's a video game, but video games have absolutely nothing to do with it whatsoever. And any mention of video games in relation to mass shootings is so absurd that it must be shouted down immediately. Okay, good stuff, guys. He even wrote an entire article. Stop pretending violent video games are harmless just because you like playing them. And it's like, look, Koreans love video games. Not a lot of them shooting up schools. Maybe the issue is not the video games. He says, obviously video games don't cause mass shooting, but it's just as obvious that extremely violent video games desensitize children to violence, which is bad in a million ways. He's acting as if the violent video games out there are like meant for kids. Kids are not supposed to be playing violent video games, okay? There are ratings on these games. He says, video games are a sacred cow because our country is filled with adults who are obsessed with them. That's why we all pretend insanely that there's nothing wrong with or disturbing about a child spending all day killing people in a virtual world. Again, uh, if you're actually talking about the graphic violent video games, those aren't meant for children. And as Shad uh, recently pointed out on his own video about the subject, which was great, I recommend you check it out. Or it might have been his friend, actually. But when people like Matt Walsh were young, guess what kids were doing? Playing cowboys and Indians where, yeah, you pretend to kill each other. But that doesn't make people violent. Now, that's the segment that Matt did about the issue. And if that were all there was to the story, it wouldn't really be that bad. Uh, breaking news, Matt Walsh doesn't like video games. He doesn't think people should play them. But, you know, he is willing to talk about the wokeness aspect for his show because he covers DEI. Like, oh, okay, we could accept that. However, where things get really bad is when someone named Greg Ree or Greg R.E., enters the picture. Now, at this point, a lot of people in the gaming community are looking at Matt Walsh's segment and kind of wondering, okay, why are you talking about games now? You've always hated them. Are you trying to grift off the topic while still simultaneously telling people to stop playing video games? Like, what's going on? People are wondering whether the Daily Wire as a whole sincerely cares about this issue or they're just kind of using it as a tool in the culture war and, you know, to get clicks. And to that end, I present this post by Mark Kern. So he's someone who did appear in a clip that was used for the Matt Walsh segment. But after that segment airs and begins getting traction online, he posts this. Well, it's official. The Daily Wire is not sincere. They act like they care about games, but they don't. I guess people are right about Matt Walsh blog, but I'd like to hear from Matt himself. Do all reporters suck like Greg? Enter Greg, who I guess is someone who maybe works for Matt, is his producer. I'm not even sure what the relationship is, but Mark included DMs between him and Greg. And it seems like at first things were friendly. Hey, Matt covered Gamergate 2 and a clip of your recent interview on the show today. Elon just uh, boosted the monologue. Wanted you to know that we're very interested in this story. Please keep us in mind if you have anything to add or any other ideas. Thanks a lot for your work. Awesome. Things are peachy keen. Maybe this Greg guy who works for the Daily Wire is on board with the gamer cause. But then very quickly, as we shall see, things turn sour. He later says, I see you want to wage a piss fight. So stupid. Like what? Immediately aggressive? And I think that DM was sent after Greg actually saw Mark's response 
to the segment because Mark on his timeline posted, I appreciate the visibility Matt Walsh brings to the issue, but can't ignore the fact that he shat on gaming time after time. Very true. Even in that same segment, if conservatives don't engage in creating culture and just bash gamers all day, they don't understand how to win. I'm here making games, Matt. He says, what are you doing? Look, for someone within the gaming industry, right? Mark is actually a developer. I think that's a pretty measured response to someone saying, don't play games. He also did another post in response to someone sharing, like, again, Matt's previous criticisms of video games. My hope is that Matt Walsh finally takes the time to understand games and anime with his newfound interest in gaming. This kind of rhetoric is blind to all the great games out there and how they have saved so many lives, brought joy to billions, and even promote marriage, teamwork, and community values he cares about. Like, here's the thing. With all of this, people are acting as if gamers randomly started to criticize Matt Walsh. And it's like, no, that is not what has happened. For years, Matt Walsh has criticized gaming gamers in this same segment. He is telling people, do not play games. Why is it a surprise that someone who works to create games doesn't agree with that? It's like basically that meme of like, you know, the feminist like throwing crap over the wall. And then when crap gets thrown back, going like, no, harassment. It's like... Great. Once more, as is the moral of the story, 99% of the time, gamers did not start this. But anyway, that brings us back to the DMs with this Greg individual. You wrote a snide comment, really stupid comment. You didn't ask to be open-minded. What a joke. He said, sure, I did read my next tweet. And he says, it's not a secret that Mac doesn't like games. He mentions that repeatedly in his monologue. So again, you are speaking to a game developer, Greg. You are speaking to someone who's been at the forefront, spearheading the issue, discussing wokeness in video games, like the last of respect that this dude has. And again, just aggressive immediately. Again, he says that doesn't preclude him from talking about the issue. You suggested it did. No, it, that's not the issue. It's not the issue that someone who doesn't like games is mentioning it. He's allowed to talk about it. He says this is obnoxious, counterproductive, and stupid. Like, so Mac can hate on games all he wants, but someone within the gaming industry can't be like, hey, maybe have an open mind because then that becomes obnoxious and counterproductive. Uh, he finishes off by saying, all right, buddy, you're a victim here. Right, take care. So after Grum's call, called out this Greg person. This is what is so interesting. Um, this Greg person went on a total meltdown. He began blocking everybody in this sphere. He blocked me. He blocked the quartering. Uh, he blocked Jeremy from Geeks and Gamers. And not only that, but this Daily Wire employee also started just bad-mouthing gamers in the replies. He says, one of the reasons mainstream publications don't bring more attention to this issue is how childish and frankly dumb a lot of gamers are on all sides. You are a good example of the problem. He's saying that, I think, in response to something the quartering posted, I can't bring up the actual tweets. I can only bring up the screenshots because again, I am blocked. In response to the court directly, he says, posts like this kind of proof is point. The space is dominated by so many stupid people. They can't even comprehend the content of a 20 second clip. Yes, gamers are all just idiots. Great commentary, Greg. Checking that I'm still blocked. Uh, yes, I am. And if that weren't all bad enough, as Jeremy from the quartering not geeks and gamers have also highlighted, he has these posts. In response to saying someone, there are no serious adults in the gaming industry. It's man children all the way down. Wow. Greg says, yep, once Elon posted Matt's monologue, they got all offended that their hobby was being covered by someone who doesn't play games. Again, that's not it. Anyone could talk about this issue is that in that monologue, he is still actively crapping on that hobby and telling people to stop playing games says also likely a lot of jealousy <laughs> okay and that same guy who obviously is not a fan of games either says he has six young children and works long hours i don't think he has much time for fun hobbies that could be another vector for the envy they have tbh okay so you've heard it right here <laughs> gamers are jealous they're childless they're stupid and it's like look i will acknowledge that this greg person is simply one person at the daily wire matt walsh who overall i think has good takes he is one person at the daily wire why i think this is worth covering is because i think these people they represent a problem that consistently comes up when conservatives try to talk about pop culture. If you guys are not familiar with my lore, my first YouTube channel before I ever started Mediaholic was just talking about issues, social issues, news from a conservative standpoint. But I started trying to talk about pop culture a little bit there because, you know, it's one of the interests that I have. And I would always get conservatives saying, this is stupid, childish, who cares? Superheroes are for kids. Games are, again, for children. And it's like, this is why you guys always lose. It's 
It's fine if you personally don't play games. You don't have to. But that doesn't mean you have to demean and mock and ridicule those who are interested in it. You know what? Fine if you insist on demonizing not only games, but also gamers. Don't then try to co-op issues in the gaming industry just to push your own political propaganda because that's exactly the problem with people like Sweet Baby Inc. in the first place. In any case, that's basically the situation going on right now. As always, I would love to know what you guys think. Do you think Matt Walsh uh, was out of line with any of his comments or are gamers just being too sensitive as we are often told they are by the media? Let me know down below though. That's it for now. And as always, if you enjoyed this video, please be sure to like, share, and subscribe.